length typically. Mm -hmm. And then all the ingredients are- Morning Trainiacs, that was just an hour ride, 94 average watts. When we recover, we recover. Also, look at this damn good Scotty race kit. Huh? Huh? At the end of the video, I will link to the video I did yesterday talking about how you can get this. I mean, not this, this takes years of carving into this fine artistic specimen. Mm. So, since switching from the Wahoo Kicker over to the Cyclops Hammer and arranging the deal with Cyclops that those athletes who are gonna be on the Team Trainiac team training platform will be able to get a discount on Cyclops trainers. Everyone's been saying, hey, when are you gonna do a review on the Cyclops Hammer today? carry that 48 pound trainer only because I love you guys. Spoiler alert! I like this trainer. As I mentioned when I first unboxed this thing, this trainer, the Cyclops Hammer, is very similar to the Wahoo Kicker, to the TAC-X Neo. I would put an asterisk around the TAC-X Flux, which is actually closer to the price point of this. They're all in that over $1,000 high-end smart trainers that have basically all the bells and whistles that you could hope to bell and whistle with the things like Trainer Road, with the things like Zwift. But there are just some small nuances that everyone wants to know about when they say like, should I go with the Kicker? Should I go with the Hammer? Should I go with the Tac-X Neo? Actually, I don't really get people asking too much about the Tac-X Neo. I imagine that's because it's $400 more. So let's get into some of the differences, the little teeny tiny differences between this and we'll say the Kicker, because that's what I have familiarity with. Number one, the changes in resistance on this are smoother. Some people that review this say that it's actually not as responsive, that when you go up a hill, it kind of gradually increases over the course of about three to four seconds, and they're like, well, that, you know, I want it to go boom. I actually only saw those reviews just this morning because over the past three weeks when I've been trying this, I was like, ooh, that's actually more like real life because you don't have too many hills that just go boom you have hills that gradually increase up to the say 6% grade that it gets to and it's not instant. So it depends what you like. Do you want it instant and sudden or do you want it to be a little more smooth which I think is more realistic. Next thing, I think that this is just a tad quieter by a couple of decibels and it's not like it's just outright quieter. It's more like the Wahoo Kicker had a bit of a high-pitched whine, whereas this is a bit more of a low hum. And especially when you got up to those really high powers, that whine was really pronounced on the Kicker, whereas this just kind of keeps that low decibel hum, so it doesn't really, I don't know, it doesn't give that same sort of stressful kind of feeling that I got on the Kicker. Certainly not on any of the more like three, four, five hundred dollar wind or magnet trainers. Cost-wise, this is $80 more than the Kicker. It is $400 less than the Tac-X Neo. Only reason that this is $80 more is because this cassette is not included. If you have a cassette, doesn't make a difference. And if you're part of Team Trainiac, we have a 10% discount on these, which amounts to $120, $80 cassette at most, so more than makes up for it. And carrying this around, if you're really big and studly like me and you can carry it like no problem, whatevs, but it's the same weight as the Wahoo Kicker, little bit better balanced because instead of the handle being right on top, it's here where they've placed it so that it's better balanced. The similarities, however, are probably more than the differences. The road feel is probably exactly the same. It's the same big flywheel. The cost, basically the same. The sound, basically the same. The reliableness of the connectivity, like basically the same. Didn't have any problems with this, didn't have any problems with the Wahoo Kicker. I think what it comes down to when you start comparing this, the Wahoo Kicker and the TAC-X Neo, I think it comes down to like the tiny little nuances of which ecosystem you wanna be in. Wahoo has the ecosystem with the Wahoo Bolt, but I never had any issues pairing this with the Wahoo Bolt computer. But this just isn't as apparent that it's like, well, you have to download an app because that's where 
all the nuts and bolts of making this thing function happen. Wahoo is very much about getting you into that ecosystem. It's also not dead silent like the TACX Neo. Do you need absolute dead silence when even with a dead silent trainer, your chain and the cassette are still gonna make some noise? I don't know, do you have a baby sleeping next to you? Depends, if you have a baby sleeping next to you. But what you get with this is a really solid trainer with a company that's known for having really good customer service. It's got about all the features that you'd want in that $1,000 plus price point kind of trainer model. Of course, there are gonna be a bunch of commenters that say, hey, I like the Elite Directo, Directo, I think it is, which is more around six, $700. And apparently the road feel on that is not nearly as good as this, so you're giving up a fair bit of really enjoyable, steady road feel, consistent road feel for a little bit of dollars. And if what I've been told about this actually plays out, what you're looking at with motion in relation to Zwift is that the TACX, I believe it's got a little bit of chatter. So if you ride over cobblestones, you get some chatter. Wahoo Kicker has been claiming since November that they're gonna come out with the climb, but month after month after month, they keep pushing it back. And apparently I'm on the list to even give it a try, but I've actually just sold the Wahoo Kicker. I kind of gave up on it because it's still not listed in the store, but they haven't told me what this is, but apparently Cyclops is going to have something that mounts to the front of your bike that allows you to have motion in Zwift. That's all they've told me. And this is going to happen before Interbike this year in September. So you end up basically comparing apples to apples. So what I did was I started looking at the ratings of all of these online. The TAC X Neo is at about 4.3 out of five. The kicker rates around 4.6. The reason that I said the TAC X Flux has a big asterisk on it is because it's like a 2.3 out of five. So we take that, don't even consider that. This, 4.7 out of five. So is it the best? Well, it, frankly, it's up to you to decide if it is the best based off of what you want. But in my case, I made the switch over because Cyclops was able to partner with me and offer Team Trainiac. If you're in on Team Trainiac, by the way, the link to the Kickstarter campaign is still in the description below. We're still raising money for that. And if you are part of Team Trainiac, you will get a 10% discount on Cyclops gear, but it is a good, and depending on who you ask, one of the best trainers, if not the best trainer out there. So thank you Cyclops. And for all of you who are wondering, Cyclops versus TACX Neo versus Kicker, flip a coin. You're not gonna be upset. However, if you want a Cyclops hammer, now you know. So there you go, Trainiacs. If you aren't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button below if you are subscribed and you dig these product reviews, hit the like button. Later.